Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. We got the Swiss bank and a record loss. Flare drop, dump, and Celsius eligible. Coinbase making massive job cuts. And here we have this. I believe it's confirmed. We do not have fair market value for XRP. I'm going to show you why. The SEC opposes Ripple's re request for redactions. It may be their version of the Hinman emails. Justin Sun, stablecoin in trouble. Digital euro launch date. European Central Bank now tethers under threat and Russia launch date for the ruble with two CBDC models. Could it equal XRP? Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on TikTok, YouTube, and Twitter for exclusive content. $890 billion market cap for crypto. The market is up 0.2%. Good afternoon. Bitcoin, 17,300 plus. Ethereum now 1,300 plus. Tether market cap, 66.3 billion, they say, and 35 cents for XRP. Let's get into this. You're going to see in just a moment here why gold is security and Glenn, it's key. I was a customer before they were a sponsor, ladies and gentlemen. Use real gold as everyday in instant, secure, and reliable money. I send my money to that app and I move it over into gold and I'm hedging all this inflation. And I have a MasterCard debit card to go along with it in case I want to go spend it just like everyday money, but it's gold and no one knows it but you. And it's amazing. And it is physically allocated gold. Click that link underneath the video. Check out the sponsor here. Very quickly, Microsoft is reportedly in talks to invest $10 billion in ChatGPT parent company on OpenAI. Just to let you know, if you don't know what this is, this is artificial intelligence, ladies and gentlemen. You type anything you want it to do or answer, and it will begin to do so immediately. I have fooled around on this a little bit, and it is pretty remarkable the way this thing is so interactive. Just incredible. Make sure you check it out for yourself. But that is going to be a game changer in technology. I I believe, and certainly another area of interest for investing on my behalf to share my digital perspectives, not financial advice. Open Monday, January 9th, the Swiss, Swiss Central Bank reported losses of $143 billion for the financial year of 2022. This, in fact, becomes the biggest loss reported by the Central Bank in its 116 years of history. Now, listen, central banks are connected at the hip. I believe that this, along with the problem we saw in China last year, Evergrande and everything connected to that, there's questions whether Evergrande is tied into Tether as well. There's questions about the cascading effects of central banks having losses like this and it becoming systemic. And I think those those concerns are certainly warranted. We'll have to see if they shake out. But nonetheless, you can understand why I'm moving towards Glint more and more all the time. This just in, Coinbase announces plans to fire another 20% of its workforce in the latest round of layoffs. The firm has now removed over 2,000 jobs, and the company's market valuation has shrunk by nearly 95% since April 2021. Holy moly, this wave has brought another 950 employee layoffs, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Wow. Just remarkable. Now, let's touch this. I touched it this morning's video, but I want to do this one more time for everybody who's not sure, doesn't know. Flares Flare token were finally distributed to XRP holders starting Monday night after nearly two year long wait in an event that generated mass chatter among the community members. However, the Flare price has now dumped over 70%. This right now, four cents is where we are we're off by more than 70 percent 73 percent to be exact ladies and gentlemen now just wanted to share this right here from jeremy hogan since he missed out on the flare snapshot barely can anyone point him in the direction to purchase some tomorrow or should i wait understand extremely lazy for me <laughs> lazy of me but it is a sunday after all and this is information for everybody uphold says jeremy the team wanted to let you know you'll be able to buy flare on uphold flare staking coming soon now, that's exciting right there, and I agree with Jeremy on this, who is a sponsor. Obviously, Uphold is, but I was a customer first. And one more reason why Uphold is my number one exchange, and it's mine too, Jeremy, but you still can't have my keys. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Looking right here, for those of you who don't know, and for the people that were harmed on Celsius Platform, 
it does appear at this point you will be eligible for the XRP balance uh, against your flare airdrop. So stay tuned for that. I will try to bring you all the relative information that you need to get your drop on that front. Let's take a look at this very quickly here. Ripple demands the Hinman emails be made public. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go into it and read into it because we have a lot to go over just yet. But I want to show you that I believe what we're really seeing here is leverage from both what both sides believe they have is leverage. One, the humiliating emails that are just shameful, according to Brad Garlinghouse. They've seen them. They know what's in them. So it must be pretty shameful. But number two is, is there's also a pushback from the SEC that is opposing Ripple's request to seal certain documents related to summary judgment motion. Now, when we go into this, and we've briefly touched this before in the, in the time of the case, but if we go into this for a second here, it says it's worth mentioning that the defendants seek to compel a complete sealing or redactions of 11 categories of records comprising more than 900 documents, according to Ripple and its executives. The documents they seek to seal or redact are necessary to protect its sensitive business and financial information third party sensitive and private business information. Now it goes on to discuss, and we've talked about this before, and I think this plays into a larger argument and point that has been going around in the last few days. It says the SEC noted that Ripple did not prove that disclosing financial statements dated more than five years ago would be detrimental to their current business. Meaning to me, my interpretation is Ripple doesn't want that disclosed financial statement information, and it isn't just because of names and addresses of where people live. It is detrimental to their current business. This was more than five years ago. It could easily speak to pre-allocation, which has been confirmed, and I am speculating here. It damn sure speaks to me that we don't have all the facts. And those facts are pretty important to Ripple that they not be seen. So I think the SEC is trying to push on this as leverage, just the way Ripple is pushing on the Hinman emails against the SEC. And could this be just as important to Ripple to not have this information be revealed to the public, the general investing retail public? Right. And certainly other businesses that could be competitors to see how they've done what they've done, which means we don't know all the exact details that make up exactly what has been done on the back end, institutional, financial institutions, all of the rest of it. Retail left in the dark tells me that we do not know the actual true fair market value or certainly the intent through all of the financial statements and documents that exist. Look, to be clear one more time, this is why the SEC versus Ripple, Ripple chose the fair notice defense in case, specifically in case they are labeled a security. The fair notice defense protects only three entities, Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, and Ripple the company. Should the judge rule that way? And somewhere along the line, Ripple felt like they may get a judgment that way. That's why they chose the fair notice defense and not some other defense. And if they do get that, then the fair notice defense would come into play for the judge to potentially rule on, which would mean that they would have clearance and be able to remain in the industry should that take place. So that doesn't mean that we're going to see a security designation, but it certainly believes that Ripple had chose that defense to prepare themselves for such an outcome. So with all of that being said, there are things and factors about this that obviously the case itself is clear enough evidence that the SEC is trying to make sure it's a security. And if it is, the real thing we need to pay attention to is how does that harm retail investors? And we're not wrong to ask the question. And I tell you, you know, I see XRP as a currency and always have. But the reality to me is, is that the SEC sees the sealing of these documents of more than five years ago as a real piece of leverage, just as Ripple sees the Hinman documents, and they're pushing very hard to create that leverage back. That may end up coming out in the wash. We'll see how it happens.
But while we're watching that, Justin Sun stablecoin, one of which Protos has previously reported on, are struggling to maintain their promised dollar peg. At the time of writing, USDD is hovering around 97 cents and USDJ at about a dollar nine. But let's add to the court. Let's add to the conversation here. While the investigation continues in 2023, the European Central Bank plans to launch the digital euro in the autumn of 2023, so just months away. Why is Tether and other stable coins under threat here? In the advent of the digital euro, there is no need for a gold standard like stable coins. The digital euro is a cryptocurrency equivalent to one euro. Therefore, it is a stable coin itself. Have you ever used any cryptocurrency other than stablecoin when you can deposit your funds directly into digital euros? Therefore, the introduction of digital euro threatens the existence of stablecoins like Tether. I have been saying this, pounding the ground. This is the bottleneck where they're going to come in and clip the wings in crypto as far as the libertarian agenda, anti-bank, anti-establishment. People largely will see the comfort in knowing that they have an actual digital euro over a stable coin, which no reserves are being accounted for by a third party accounting firm. You know, th this gets pretty easy for them. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. That's what's going to happen. You can see what's going to happen. The writing is on the wall. Meanwhile, Hong Kong and France speed up the crypto regulation process while other countries are steadily moved to regulate the asset class. I want to go quickly into this just to show you. And I really want to go down to Hong Kong here because it is right here, I believe, where I found this. One second here. I just want to make sure I've got it highlighted. There it is. This is in regards to Hong Kong here. Paul Chan, Financial Secretary of Hong Kong, says that the country is working to attract businesses in the sector of crypto and fintech. Now, it says Hong Kong is committed to becoming a regional crypto hub. Listen to this section. As certain crypto exchanges collapse one after another, Hong Kong became a quality standing point for digital asset corporates. The city has a robust regulatory framework that matches internal norms and standards while prohibiting free riders. The Hong Kong regulatory authorities are also willing to expand crypto trading to retail investors, which currently limits to those with $1 million in bankable assets. Accredited investors is where they are right now, ladies and gentlemen, right? And this is the concern here in the United States when it comes to XRP, isn't it? Look, if there's nothing, you know, look. I'm a big, I hold Ripple shares. I hold XRP. You guys know this. You've been following the channel for any length of time. I want to see a positive outcome for XRP, but I know what the SEC is trying to do. And I've watched the government do nothing about all the things that are clear and obvious, whether it comes to uh, improprieties or just criminal behavior. We've seen nothing done. In fact, what I have witnessed is Congress give basically Goldman Gary the blessing. And that's all of Congress I'm talking about, because none of Congress has stopped him as of yet. But we shall see. Looking right here, very quickly here, Russia's central bank is reportedly set to begin developing cross-border settlement system using CBDC, the Russian ruble, amid ongoing sanctions in response to its invasion of Ukraine. Very quickly here. The plan to move forward with Russia's digital ruble are expected to, expected to come in the first quarter of this year. And we'll see Russia's central bank study two possible cross-border settlement models. <laughs> the first to propose, uh, mo propose model sees various countries entering into separate bilateral agreements with Russia to integrate their central bank digital currency system. Each agreement would be made to ensure the conversion and transfer of assets between the countries are in accordance with the rules of the agreements. The second, more complicated model proposes, listen to this, a single hub-like platform for Russia to interact with other countries, sharing common protocols and standards to facilitate payments between the connected countries. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know how many individual agreements in the first proposed model you're going to see countries do with Russia, just for the political fallout alone.
but the second more complicated model involves a single hub like platform hey i think it's a good time to remind you the xrp ledger is a decentralized exchange can operate like a single hub that everybody could plug into as a market maker and a market participant sharing common protocols standards to facilitate payments between the connected countries now this seems like the insulary bridging mechanism multi-bridge that we've heard bis talk about so so much and we know from james wallace the head of central bank engagement for ripple and xrp that the xrp ledger and xrp is in fact one of those models being tested does it mean that we're going to see the digital ruble interact with the XRP ledger, the private ledger for, for central banks? I don't know. But I tell you what, I like my odds. <laughs> I don't know if any other entity has done the work to the degree that Ripple or XRP Ledger Foundation has done in this regard. We're going to keep watching it closely. That's going to do it for me, not financial advice for me or anyone else. Make sure you leave a comment below. And by the way, I just want to say very quickly for all the listeners, <clears throat> I'm out of the country right now. I'm still making content every day. The video you saw with Molly Elmore and, and me, and shout out to Molly, no one has more respect for Molly than I do. It was a private business meeting that we were having that turned into an impromptu conversation about Ripple and possible outcome of the court case. Yes, I did share a monologue on my end of that conversation. I promise you will hear from more from Molly Elmore as well. It was certainly out of context, and I could have done a better job at setting that up so you understood that it was never a scheduled interview, but just a talk between two friends that have a lot of respect for one another. I certainly have a great respect for her. You will hear from her on my channel. Channel in a more formal fashion I promise you that and we all want to have a moment and a chance and opportunity to hear her wonderful insights and perspectives on this space no doubt about it keep a lookout for that and so much more I'll catch all of you on the next one